This is a really hard video to make because I do think that there's a problem in learning and development and I think I'm the person to talk about it because I don't have a horse in the race and I think there's a lot of shady things going on. So I made this video to inform you as a consumer of some things you should be wary of when you're looking into instructional design academies. Now, I wanna be clear, this video is my opinion. I am not specifically calling out any academy in this video. However, if you think I might be talking about you and your academy, I probably am. With that, let's get started. All right, before we dive into it, I first want to explore some of the symptoms and reasons I think that we are currently here in ID Academy land, Palooza in 2021. So before the pandemic even hit, I did see some stuff going on, at least in the formal bucket of education, of learning development, where a lot of masters PhD and EDD programs weren't necessarily cutting the mustard, so to speak, in preparing future instructional designers to get a job. Again, this is nothing new. This has been a complaint of higher education for years, but I feel like it really started to come to a head more and more when more employers were looking for people that didn't just know the theory, but could also apply it, use learning technologies, and create a learning experience, right? So I think that that has been kind of a catalyst in having a lot of these academies pop up. That's been problem number one as to why these academies keep popping up. I think another component to that has been the fact that since the pandemic, there has just been a flood in the market of people looking to transition to instructional design. A large number of job applicants in the instructional design market are teachers and they are looking for a pivot after the horrible year of 2020. And I think that there are a lot of these ID academies that have popped up to kind of feed that population. And then three, my, my the biggest reason I think a lot of these ID academies are popping up is because uh, people aren't getting these big contracts and they're having trouble getting clients and they need a way to find money. And so they want to take money out of your pocket and put it, put it in theirs. Yeah, I said it. So... With that, um, let's go ahead and hop into the questions. So the first question that I think you should ask when you're deciding if you should pay for an ID Academy is who is leading that program? Now, I want to be very clear here. I am the kind of person that I read five or six, even seven Amazon reviews to spend $20. So you might call me a cheapskate. I prefer to call myself economically efficient. I like to hold a dollar until an eagle cries. I mean, it's going to take a lot for you to get my money. But the fact that some of these ID academies are just preying on people that are so desperate, right? I mean, people are looking for jobs. People are, are getting really run down, putting in, you know, hundreds of applications, which I think is bananas to begin with. And, you know, I, I think there's people preying on that. So before you give anybody a dime of your money, you need to do your due diligence and you need to research these people, okay? So go to your favorite search engine, uh, go to Google, go to wherever, and you need to type in their name and you need to search very clearly what it is that they have done, specifically what they have done in beyond the last three to four years, okay? So have they contributed to learning and development beyond 2018 all right and the reason i bring that up is again i've seen this rocket ship of these id academies take off and a lot of people that are producing content i hate to say it they're producing content to get your money that's why you've never seen a video like this on youtube about these id academies but anyway so what have they contributed in the beyond 2018, right? Because here's the thing. If they're the big deal that they're telling you that they are, they've been around the block a while. And let me be very clear here. Learning and development is a very small community, right? And it's a very welcoming community. It's a very open community. But there are a couple people running academies that no one's ever heard of. 
straight up. No one's ever heard of them. They've never presented at the big conferences, the big conferences being ATD ICE, uh, Learning Solutions, DevLearn. If they're international, it would be Learning Technologies. They haven't presented at any of these conferences. No one's ever heard of them. They haven't contributed anything to the field. So my question is, you know, if you're this really big deal, you should be able, people should be able to find you and your contributions pretty easily. They should be able to see if you've won any awards. Have you competed in a demo fest before? I can think of a couple people that run academies that have, but the most of them haven't. Have you presented a conference before? Are you ready for this? Sticker shock. A lot of them haven't presented at the big conferences, but they're taking your money out of your pocket, telling you how great they are and how much they matter and everything, right? I'm just saying, be a good steward of your resources here, okay? I, I think that, you know, the contribution to the field is something that's super important. You want somebody that has a servant heart. You want somebody that has really, again, given back to the community, kind of worked in the trenches, um, you know, really research people, you know, and, and I, I just think that's really important to do. I don't think a lot of people do it. And I think that that is why a lot of people have been dissatisfied with their experiences in ID academies so far. Let me interrupt this video for just a quick little shot of piping hot tea. There is one ID Academy who actually uses stuff that my friend creates and I'm not going to mention my friend's name but my friend is very generous in the wonderful content he provides around a particular e-learning authoring tool. He found out there's an academy that actually downloads a lot of the stuff that he creates and uses it in their tool class. So my question is why would you pay money to somebody to use someone else's stuff that they create when if they're as great as they say they are, wouldn't they make their own content? And wouldn't they create their own things in that e-learning authoring tool to help you? Think about that. All right, let's get to question number two. And if you're still with me, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help with uh, just pushing my content out more, and I would definitely appreciate it. So question two you need to be asking is, what do I need to do to be successful? Now, again, here's some extra tea. I do think that there are people that think that they can wiggle their nose and they should be an instructional designer. And that's not the case. Even if you are a teacher, you are actually transitioning to a different career. And so you do need to put in some work. And you need to ask very clearly, what are the expectations of you in these programs and what does success look like in these programs? Some programs are going to be really focused on, you know, you creating something. I think that that's definitely a step in the right direction. I think it's always great when you can create something. But let me also be clear, if you create something in the confines of an academy, you're probably not going to get super critical feedback because they don't want you to think that they're mean and say that they're mean and not get more enrollees in. So I've seen a lot of stuff shared on LinkedIn that have been made in academies that I'm like, oh my gosh, do people actually think this is good? And then the comments are like, wow, great job, wonderful. And I don't want to be negative because I do think that everyone starts starts somewhere and I think it is great when people work out loud but the fact that some people are being told that this is good and this would be a good standard in a work environment I, I think is you're being you got bamboozled look at you really ask the question you know what is it that I need to do to be successful and really look into that and make sure that it's something that you can commit to if it has a synchronous part where you have to be live to be part of it and you can't do that, you shouldn't sign up for that program. That's probably not going to fit for you. So make sure that you can put in the time to really get the most out of the program that you're signing up to. Also, to go along with that question, you need to also ask, what is being promised? Are you being guaranteed a job? Are you being guaranteed a mentor for life, a really awesome group of people that's going to have your back ride or die? What is it that they are promising you? And if they're promising you anything, 
be leery. Doesn't matter how much work you put into it, you're probably not going to be guaranteed a job. Um, you know, there nothing in life is is guaranteed. I know a ton of great talent on the market right now that I am just shocked that they haven't been scooped up by someone. And know that whatever job you're applying for, you're competing with a lot of fantastic talent right now. So make sure that, you know, you are understanding if they're promising something. And to also go along with that, you know, if you find out in between, this is another question, that, you know, maybe you're not liking it. You know, what can you do if it's not for you. So if, if, if you try it out and it's not jiving for you, is there something where you can get your money back? Or how can you assess that? That's a question you need to ask uh, up front. And I don't think you're being a bad consumer when you're asking that. You're just, again, assessing the risk for you. A lot of these programs are not cheap. Several of them are $1,000 plus, and I don't know about you all, but I think that's a lot of money to give up, and I know it's an investment in yourself, but I'd also be really leery, and I would ask that question. I mean, there are people that you might not jive with. There are people that teach some of these academies that I just do not like at all, and that's fine. They probably don't like me either, and they're really not going to like me after I put this video out, and, and, and that's fine, but it's your money and you should get something of value out of it. All right, another question you should ask is how are members supported in their career journey? And what I mean by that is, will that person be a champion for you? I absolutely get my pitchfork out every time somebody talks about paying for a mentor. You should not pay for a mentorship. You could pay for a coach or you could pay for a service. But to me, a mentor is somebody who is there to support you and you can also learn from as well. So people that I've mentored in the past, it has definitely been a two-way um, relationship, meaning that I've gotten a lot out of having them in my life and I've grown along with them. And that's been really fun to be, to be a part of. And those are the kind of relationships that I cherish and I enjoy. And I don't think you should pay for that. There have been so many people that have been kind enough to give me their time in this industry to get me to where I am today. And they never once asked me for my credit card number. So I you need to be asking, you know, how how are you going to be supported in your career journey? Is it something where you have access to the content for life or it's a la carte, you have to pay for each course? You know, really knowing that ahead of time, I think is really important. But, you know, I, I just think that that's something you need need to ask. Another question that is worth asking is, what is being taught? right? So is it something that is what I call transactional, meaning that you're building something or it's something that you can physically do? Or is it theory? Is it, you know, whatever? Um, I think that that's really important. One big question to ask here is how is the content going to help me get a job? Case in point, using Canva is great. I use it too, but I sure as f don't call myself a graphic designer. I know that I'm using it as a template. Also, another thing, I have not seen in my career someone get super excited about someone who can build an infographic. I've actually never even used an infographic at work that I can recall in the time that I've been an instructional designer. So really make sure that what you're being taught adds value to your profile and helps you get a job. Ask for that evidence, ask for that reassurance. If you can't get that in the program, again, that might be another red flag. So there you have it. Questions that you should consider before paying for an Instructional Design Academy. I hope these questions are helpful for you to think about. And if you are looking at an ID Academy, hopefully they're questions that you can ask. Have you been a part of an ID Academy? Have you signed up? What was your experience? I'd love to hear more about it. I may do a part two to this because I have so much more I'd like to share, but this video is already a little bit long, but I'd love to hear your comments in the chat. Let me know, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What was your experience? And stay tuned uh, for more unfiltered instructional design content. Thank you all so much and until next time.